In Australia recently, figures were released showing that childhood vaccination rates have fallen to dangerously low levels in some areas of the country. And this has started again what some people refer to as the vaccine debate. In reality, there's no debate. The science is in and vaccines are safe and effective. So let's look at myth number one, vaccines cause autism. This is an unsinkable rubber duck, and this myth was initiated in 1998 by Dr. Andrew Wakefield, who published a paper in The Lancet suggesting that the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine was linked to autism. Since then, he has been struck from the medical records as a doctor. The paper has been withdrawn from publication, and his work has been suggested to be fraudulent. This is because he didn't reveal many conflicts of interest about his research, including the fact that he was paid by lawyers to build a case against the safety of the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine, and also that he had submitted a patent for a singles measles vaccine of his own. So after around 12,000 publications and 14 years, there is still no good evidence to support a link between vaccines and autism. Myth number two. Smallpox and polio have virtually disappeared from the world, so why do we need to vaccinate? Well, it's precisely because of vaccination that India has now had two years polio free and smallpox exists only in freezers in scientific laboratories. In fact, we've seen evidence recently in Wales in the UK of the effect of being complacent about vaccinating. Once we stop vaccinating, as we did after the scare by Wakefield, then we see the resurgence of preventable diseases like there are now in measles outbreaks in Wales. And this is one of the problems with vaccines. In a way, they're a victim of their own success. Once the diseases are reduced, they're out of mind, out of sight, and we don't see a need to vaccinate anymore. But it's important to remember they haven't gone away. They're still around and they'll come back with a vengeance. Myth number three. More vaccinated people get the disease, therefore vaccines don't work. Vaccines are not 100% effective. They're not like a force field. So we can still pick up diseases even if we've been vaccinated. In addition, all vaccines have a different level of effectiveness. Some are more effective than the other. Some are more effective after you've had two shots as opposed to one shot. But if you do catch the disease when you're vaccinated, it's much less likely you'll get severe complications, severe side effects, and the severity and duration of the disease will be reduced. Myth number four, my unvaccinated child should be no risk to your vaccinated child. Vaccines are not 100% effective, and there's also many people in the community who can't be fully vaccinated or can't be vaccinated at all. For example, very young babies may have not had any vaccines yet, so they're at risk of contracting disease and they're more likely to die. Also, some people have suppressed immune systems or may be receiving cancer therapies. They can't have vaccinations. Community immunity is the term we give to everyone getting vaccinated so we can protect the community. Vaccination is not just a personal choice, it's a social responsibility. Myth number five, vaccines contain toxins. So many of us these days turn to the internet to research our medications and to look up and diagnose our conditions. And if you type vaccination into Google, you'll find a whole bunch of scary sounding chemicals and toxins that are contained in vaccines. Well, in fact, they're all there for a reason. The most common one that people will say is dangerous is mercury. It's also known as thiomersol or thimerosal but it was taken out of all childhood scheduled vaccines in the year 2000. It's simply not there. Some of the other compounds such as formaldehyde, that is in vaccines, but there's 600 times more formaldehyde in a pear that you eat than what you get in a vaccine. And your body naturally makes formaldehyde. Myth number six, vaccines can overwhelm my child's immune system. Now this is a concept that some people call too many too soon and it can seem logical to think my tiny baby's body can't take all these vaccines. Very recently the Institute of Medicine in the US looked at the number of vaccines that children receive on the childhood immunisation schedule. After extensive study and meticulous analysis they determined that they are quite safe. So the amount of immune challenges that a child might experience in their environment every day 
equals between 2,000 and 6,000, whereas across the lifetime of a childhood schedule, it's only about 150. So there's nothing to worry about with overwhelming a child's immune system.